Hi everyone, welcome to, to Talk, Talk Juicy. Juicy. I am your host, Brittany. And I am Leanne. And welcome to another edition of Talk Juicy. So for starters, Leanne, you got your hair cut. Kind of, a little <laughs> bit. Um, actually, I wear extensions, so I took them out. Wonderful. And now I'm rocking this short do for now. I think I'll have it for a couple of months. I, I actually like having my natural hair. Yeah, I like change. it too. I, I like it on you. It is a good change. So let's talk about hair a little bit. So um, I know that you rock extensions. A lot of us ladies do, including myself. I like to rock them from time to time as well. I feel that it adds a lot of, you know, flair. Flair and pizzazz. Yes. You know, it makes you feel sensual. Very sensual and <laughs> like, you know, more so like a woman when you have big hair. I just like big hair. I happen to like big hair. But um, let's talk about other people. Like I, I know the hair industry for one is so popular right now with people buying extensions. And it's also very popular for people to go natural with their hair these days. I've been seeing a lot of younger people, younger generation, you know, girls going natural and wearing their hair like in natural styles. Like, it would you ever consider that? Yeah, I, it's definitely a phase or a trend. I won't say a phase. It's definitely a trend that's catching on right now. See, I consider myself to kind of wear my hair natural just because natural Like how meaning, it is now? Yeah, natural meaning no hair weave or no extension. Okay. I'm not one of those girls that are like natural meaning no hot iron, no right. heat, no processing. <laughs> because let's just be honest, my hair is so coarse that if I wore it 100% natural, I would be looking like Ben Wallace sitting next <laughs> to you today. And that's just not my style. Well, there's, that's not ways, what there's ways that you could train your hair that even if it is, kind of coarse you know I know some people deal with issues like that you can kind of train it with the products that you use for it to be a little bit softer pattern than what it is essentially right and then I think it like it depends on the person too because for me um, training your hair also means like doing your hair so I don't really do my hair well when I have extensions I'm good because I know how to work a wand <laughs> or a curling iron agreed exactly so when I'm when I have extensions I can make myself look like Beyonce I'm good right right but but when I have my natural hair in, it's more of a process for me. So I go get my hair done, um, you know, bi-weekly. And I'm not the girl to actually sit there and train it myself and, like, buy all the products and do it at home. That's just not me. Okay. I, I don't have that talent. I wish I did. I would save a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I do both. I know how to do my hair myself. But I also like the luxury of going to the salon sometimes and, you know, getting pampered and just having someone else do it for me because it looks better and I just feel better as a woman when I can go and you know indulge on spending money to get my hair done yeah it's always a nice thing but I really like the fact that a lot of the younger girls are now in this trend with having the natural hair I think it's great because there's actually an organization on campus um, mm -hmm. the one that they started last year mm -hmm. I forget love the name. naturally love is what naturally it's yes mm -hmm. hey girls hey love naturally hey my love naturally girls I love you guys I know I haven't been to a meeting in a while but I still love you but anyways <laughs> um, I know that was a little plug but no, I love the fact that they actually teach you how to, you know, do your hair and use natural products. So they have all of these different remedies where you're making things for your hair and they're like in your kitchen. So they use a lot of coconut oil and almond oil and just things that are very natural and healthy for you to put in your hair. Because a lot of these products that they have these days are so filled with chemicals that it's actually more, it does more harm to your hair than it does good. And they say that it's, oh, it's based with coconut oil and this and that. But when you look at the ingredients, it's not so. So for me, I'm kind of like back and forth. My hair changes, and my fiance is always like, your hair changes all the time, like with the wind. I can wake up one day and be like, hey, I want to have short hair. And then the next day, if I want to do long hair, I'll get an extension, do some clippings. Yeah. But as far as like the whole process goes of like making your own hair care product, I just don't have the time. That can be so time consuming. You know what? You know? Well, it actually doesn't take that much time at all. I've actually done it myself before. Um, and I made an oil and it was out of coconut oil, almond oil, avocado oil, olive oil. That's so greasy yeah. in your hair, well, right? Well, you know what? 
believe it or not, all of those oils are kind of light, so it was not that greasy at all. And you okay. don't use a lot. Okay. So me personally, when I wash my hair and if I blow dry it or let it dry, I kind of just put a little bit of my hands and just like run it through. Mm -hmm. I don't put a lot because it'll weigh your hair down. Yeah, you know? especially but for African American it, hair. Yeah, for African American yep. hair. So if you just, you know, pat it, put a little bit through your hair so that it just, you know, soaks up those essential oils and they're all natural, So which is why I love them. Because mm -hmm. you can even use coconut oil on your skin. You can use it to cook with. I coconut cook with it. oil is you like can use it for everything. so many different reasons. Like we have it in our kitchen, but sometimes like if I'm cooking, I just like grab some, put it on my hands. Yeah. You know, put it on my. Elbow. You can put it on your face. You can put it everywhere. It's, not, it's awesome, it's, and it's very light. It's not if you get that you know natural coconut oil that's like condensed like cold pressed so it's still hard it's mm -hmm. like you know white it's not melted or anything but it's it's so good for everything for cooking if I ever saute I use it Confident, yeah. I use it on my face sometimes you know if I run out of lotion and I'm like oh I need some you know moisturizer mm -hmm. I can use it for that it's so many different ways it's wonderful and if you make your side note if you make your pancakes with coconut oil they taste like coconut pancakes oh and it's so good so delicious it's no so good. you can make your french toast with coconut oil you can just about make it Anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a one one kind of thing oil, I guess. Yes. You can do everything with it. <laughs> so, oh my God, all of this food talk or talk about coconut oil is making me hungry, actually. <laughs> so, um, with that being said, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. The Orion Lighted Parade is a tradition that ushers in the holiday season here in the Orion area. Families line the streets in the village to enjoy this festive event, but it wouldn't be possible without the Holly Jolly Folly. This year's fundraiser is scheduled to take place on Friday, December 5th at Golling Buick GMC, located at 1491 South Lapeer Road. Enjoy live entertainment, a silent auction, a cash bar, and a 50-50 raffle. Food will be provided by Italia Garden. Tickets are $35 per person and are available at Golling Buick GMC. For more information, call the Orion Area Parade Group at 248-802-5521 or visit orionlightedparade.org. And welcome back. So if you're just joining us, we were um, just talking about natural hair and hair extensions and how to keep your natural hair healthy. And Brittany had some really good suggestions about using coconut oil. But speaking of coconut oil, I mentioned it earlier. I do a lot of cooking with coconut oil because it's so healthy. Yes. So do you use coconut oil in your kitchen? I do. I, I mentioned that before. I use coconut oil for almost everything because I don't use any vegetable oil or canola oil or things like that. I use coconut oil in place for anything. So I never fry, but if I like saute, I use coconut oil if I'm making whatever, grilled cheese or whatever I need to make that involves oil instead of butter, instead of like the regular vegetable oil or canola oil, I use coconut oil because it's healthier and it's organic. So I'm really into the healthy, clean eating. So if you guys out there, we're, we're actually, Talk Juicy promotes healthy lifestyle choices. So we want you guys to eat clean, and be healthy because when you do, it can not only affect how you're feeling, you know, your mood, but it can affect your skin, your hair, your nails, everything essentially that's in your life can, and what you put into your body. I, I know you guys have heard the saying, you are what you, you eat. eat. Yeah. That is true in every essence of the word because when you eat bad things, I don't know if you guys pay attention to it, but if I eat something that's that I'm not used to eating that's really bad for me, I feel so sluggish throughout the day and it's like my whole day is thrown off. So we wanna make sure that you guys know what it means to eat healthy and what it means to eat unhealthy and how negatively it can affect your body. Well, I would agree with that, but for me, I'm just getting onto the clean eating train because um, I am pretty slim. I don't really gain weight, so I'm pretty much <laughs> We've like... We've noticed. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like a human trash can. It's like you step on my foot and then the thing, the food just goes in. But no, so I um, don't really... I, I didn't really think about what I used to eat because it wasn't like a weight issue. Mm -hmm. I just eat what makes me happy. So on Tuesday at 12 o'clock at night, if I'm hungry, I would go get 
a full meal and eat it. And it wasn't <laughs> until I started, you know, just interacting with more people that are eating clean and healthy that I really realized, like, I need to do something about my eating habits. Well, you obviously so, have a very fast metabolism. I do. So everybody out there, I'm sure you guys would agree with me when you say you don't have the same issue, how you can eat everything and it never sticks to you. Because I have to, me being the person I am, I have to watch my figure and I have to watch what I eat. I mean, I'm not big, but I just, you know, I'm very conscious of what I eat, of, you know, how much I eat, the mm -hmm. things that I put in my body, because it not only does it affect just my weight, but it affects my mood throughout the day. It can right. affect, you know, how tired or, you know, upbeat I am, like right. physically. And then my skin, I'm very, very cautious about my skin and my skin is very sensitive. So when I eat bad things, it comes out on my skin. Right, so I say all of that to say like, for me, I was seeing some of the things like, okay, maybe I am a little more sluggish when I eat poor or mm -hmm. things like that, or it can have an effect on my skin. But let's be honest, healthy eating is very expensive. And if you it are a be. college student, I mean, and when I was in college, I could not afford to eat healthy. And now that I'm out of college, I'm making a little bit more money. I can, you know, shop at Whole Foods and eat a little bit more healthy. But if you're trying to eat healthy on a budget, that's pretty tough. So I mean, what well, would you, um, like, what's your suggestion to people who are trying to switch over from a not-so-healthy lifestyle mm -hmm. to a healthy lifestyle, but they're on a budget? Well, my suggestion would be for all of those, either college students or just people who have a hard time, you know, getting those organic foods, Trader Joe's is a great place to shop. Like, I know Whole Foods probably has the best quality or whatnot, considering 90% of the store is organic. However, Trader Joe's is just as good, and mm -hmm. they're not that expensive. And if you even go to Walmart, I mean, you don't always have to have organics, people, in order to eat healthy. Like, you can still eat healthy and eat food that's not organic, but you can pick things that are healthy. And actually, next week, we're going to show you guys how to make a few healthy meals in minutes. So that'll be really fun so you guys can take some recipes home. However, like, Walmart is a good spot. I like Walmart. You know, sometimes when I have to get a bag of salad or, you know, some fruit, I'll run there. And it's a little less expensive than Trader Joe's. But I say Trader Joe's is, like, my best friend right now as far as where I grocery shop because they have organics. It's not as expensive as Whole Foods because Whole Foods is very expensive. And, and Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. And Walmart is pretty good. They actually have some organic things at Walmart, too. But you don't have to always go to Walmart either. But if you wanted to, like, I, I could give you a list of suggestions of things that are still healthy and, you know, pretty inexpensive. Okay, so then for the viewers, what about meal preparation? Because we all know that in order to eat healthy, it takes time. It's very time consuming. So I'm finding the biggest struggle with meal preparation. I have to literally devote an hour the previous day or a day of the week, an hour at least, to prep meals for throughout the week because if I don't, I don't have time to prepare these healthy meals and that's when I start to eat out. So it's very important to prep for your meals. What would you say about meal preparation? Do you have any like tips? I do have tips and I would actually rather show you guys than tell you, which is why I'm going to bring, you know, a few recipes with me next week on the show and give you guys some recipes for like, you know, a really quick breakfast and lunch option that you can make. And those are healthy meals in literally minutes. Both of the meals are under 10 minutes to make and they're really good for people who are on the go and you know you don't really have time to prep or whatnot you know there's some really good recipes and I want to share them with you so some things that are first of all healthy for like breakfast would be like oatmeal you know that's a quick meal to make oh yeah I make that every morning yeah so do I so I'm gonna show you guys a really good recipe for oatmeal so you don't have to use those instant packets I Ew, hate, I those hate things. instant oatmeal it's yeah disgusting. that's it's disgusting and it's not good for you you guys, if you, you have to think about it. If there's dried up fruit, not saying dried fruit is bad, but if there's dried up fruit in a little condensed packet and it's been there for God knows how many months, I don't know what type of healthy that can be. Not just that, but the time that it takes to make instant oatmeal, you can literally make oatmeal from scratch. Exactly. And it's the same and amount I'm of gonna, time. That's why I'm going to yeah. give you guys the recipe that's so much better than those instant packets that you guys make. 
And um, yeah, so I want you guys to know, we want you guys to practice healthy lifestyle choices. And it's not only eating clean, but it's being physically active and making sure you get some exercise throughout the week so that you know you can feel better. Because when you feel better inside, you put your best foot forward and you can be better on the outside in mm -hmm. everything that you do. I'm a firm believer of that. Okay, so speaking of exercise, Brittany, I don't really exercise. I'm very guilty of this. Um, so only exercise I get is just like running my mouth. So <laughs> seriously, what would you say to people who are like me, maybe some of our viewers who don't really exercise and now it's getting cold, so we're really not motivated to work out. What kind of workouts can we do in the cold? Okay, so what I would suggest, first of all, I know that it is cold. It's so much easier to exercise in the summertime because people can ride a bike or go for a jog. Those of you who are diehard joggers, you still jog in the wintertime, so keep it going. But it's much easier in the summertime because you're so much act so much more active, you know, and you're always going somewhere, you're always walking somewhere 9 times out of 10. So, I would suggest that for right now since it is cold and a lot of people don't want to exercise, you just kind of want to, you know, sit on the couch and watch TV, get under that snuggy blanket and be warm. But if you guys have cable television or the internet, there's always different classes that you could watch online or take and you know it could be some exercises that you can do in your home essentially. I mean that's great. I mean I know people like to run so you get a treadmill. People like to get their abs going so they get that I call it the ab cruncher. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> but like I found that like we invest so much money into these exercise contraptments that very true you know we invest so much money we're like oh this year I'm gonna exercise the infomercials then, are exactly. what gets you the infomercials you they, get you get all that stuff and then it's just like extra closet space like you start hanging your clothes on the <laughs> treadmill very and true your pants on the you know bow flex if you have one like that would be me I would be that person that gets this equipment and not use it so how do you stay motivated to use all of that equipment Brittany very true I would say I mean, if it's not even if it's just for the fact that you spent your money on the equipment, you better use it if you bought it. But a lot of people do get caught up into buying all of these different uh, merchandise and or these different options for exercising at home, and it's just so it's a way for them to get your money, and it's a way for you to kind of set yourself up for failure. I feel like if it's at your home. If you're not that diehard person who always exercises and, you know, you're never unmotivated to exercise, then it would be good for you to have that in your home because you're going to do it regardless. But by considering the fact that it is in your home, it makes you, I feel like it makes you more lazy and you're like, ah, uh, it's there, I'll do it when I do it, you know, but you never really get around to it. And then it becomes an extra place to hang your clothes and do mm -hmm. all this other stuff when that's not the reason you bought it. So I would say for those people who, if you don't think that you're going to use it, don't buy it. Don't spend your money on it. You might as well get a gym membership and go out and exercise at the gym, you know, and actually get your money's worth. You because know what? I think you're onto something because yeah. I just thought about it. It's like the end of the year. The new year is coming up. People are going to be making all these resolutions to get in shape. I'm just going to come out with a workout machine. Everybody's going to buy it <laughs> and nobody's going to use it. Brilliant. I'm making some money right there. You are. Yes. <laughs> you got to get him to buy it. Get you an infomercial. I am. I'm just going to be buy like, it. I lost 300 pounds by using this yeah, machine. Yeah, put on a fat suit. And uh -huh. then <laughs> yeah. I put the before Take your picture, before and after picture. And then I'm going to have me as the after saying I made this machine. People should buy it for the new year. Great. Bring me a business plan. I'll be your partner. Girl, that's we perfect. Can do that. <laughs> I'm telling you, in six months, I'm going to be rolling in dough just from this exercise. No, machine. that would be really fun, though. But um, I would just say, you know, there's things that you can do at home. If you have Comcast as your cable television station that you prefer, there's actually on demand. There's classes and things that you can take that are specifically for fitness and working out. So you could always do those 30-minute to an hour exercises at home. You know, move some things around in your living room, get it nice and comfortable in there, and do a workout. See how good it makes you feel afterwards. You would be surprised. And then do that three times a week, and you'll have the momentum to do it every day a week after that if you want. So I think it'll be really great. You know what? I just thought about something. I do work out. You just reminded me. 
once a week, I pop in my Beyonce DVD and I just perform <laughs> the whole thing. So if you're like me, that's not really working. That's a work. Out. Listen, Beyonce does abs, cardio. She like does stunts, basically all she in heels. Does that this in is working her performance. your This is working your <laughs> gluteus maximus. This is working everything. So no. you can just act like Beyonce, turn on the m music videos, and just dance, <laughs> and then there you go. It's Flirty Girl Fitness. Remember that? <laughs> Yes. I do remember Flirty Girl Exactly. Fitness. There you go. That's how I do That's it. That's funny. Well, we want to know what you guys think. And we'll actually try to develop a segment on the show where we can do some exercises and you guys can, yeah, don't look crazy, Leanne. <laughs> Y'all should have got my face on that one. <laughs> yeah. We're she's actually looking, she's yeah. looking a surprise. Yeah. I'm we can do a show where oh. we can do some exercise. Well, we're already doing the... Who wants to win bowling and tennis challenge? We're st we still we have still that We still have coming. to take that. Yep, we still have that coming. But we can also do a segment where we're exercising and we can show you guys some moves that you can do at home that are 30 minutes or less. And if you progress and continue to do it every week, we would like to see your changes. So keep us posted. Yeah. Send us your pictures, your before and afters, and I'll be sure to post my, my before and I'll probably oh, be Lord, like stop this it. after. You don't need it a before and after. Her before and after are going to be the same before and, and after. after. Yeah. So. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but so we're actually going to take a break. And when we come back, we're discussing Black Friday. You guys shopping for Black Friday? Uh, no. <laughs> we want to know. Hello, I'm Joanne Van Tassel. Here on behalf of the Lake Orion Lions Club, to let you know that again this year, the Lions Club will be doing Christmas baskets of food and gifts for families in need here in the Orion area. This year, there are donation boxes at a number of locations, and those locations are shown on your screen. We'd appreciate whatever help you could provide in assisting the Lake Orion Lions Club in providing much needed food for needy folks here in our community. Hey guys, we're back. So Black Friday is coming up. It's actually next Friday, not this upcoming Friday, but the next Friday. And I know the stores are gonna be just ludicrous, filled with people who are inching to get these prices for Black Friday. How do you feel, Leanne? Are you going Black Friday shopping? First of all, I already have a headache because I <laughs> I am a part of the Retail Workers Association. No, <laughs> that's not really an association. But there no, should be. I know, right? There should be because we need help this time of year. Like, I need to see a psychiatrist. I'm stressed. I do not Black Friday shop because for the last six years of my life, I've been working retail on Black Friday, and I've been in the madness and in the chaos. So those of you that actually do pray, please pray for me. <laughs> um, I don't like Black Friday, and I, it, it could be just because I've been working retail all these years, so I obviously have the short hand of the stick because I don't get a chance to shop. I deal with the crazy shoppers. But in between the fights, the arguments, the bad parking at the mall, the long hours, Mm -hmm. I never want to see another Black Friday, ever. I think that Black Friday should be, it should not exist. It should be taken away, <laughs> like off of the calendar. Well, first of all, I want to know why it's called Black Friday. Because it's the darkest day of the year. <laughs> like, it's just so dark. No one even wants it's to It's not the darkest day, but, I mean, a lot of people do go out with their families. They, they, they do this as a tradition. It's the day after Thanksgiving every year. A lot of people go out with their families, their friends, and they probably get the best deals of the year. It's probably even better than the after Christmas sales. Whatever. It's so American of us to sit around the table the day before and be and like tell everything that we're grateful for as if we don't have enough stuff. And then the day after, <laughs> rush out to the mall and get more stuff. Oh, I'm so grateful for all of the stuff that I have. But let's go get more. No, yeah. people chill. Just relax. Enjoy your leftovers because they're better the second day and don't go to the mall. You know what? The stores are actually smart, though. I think they do that for a reason. They do they do Black Friday the day after Thanksgiving because they know people are going to be in town with their families. And it's just another outlet for them to go and spend money. Yeah. So right. I think that <laughs> the stores are smart for that. But I also think so. it gets a little like it gets a little invasive, especially for the workers. And it's not just me complaining about Black Friday, but now it's like the people are so 
like they are so ready to shop that the stores are opening on Thanksgiving. Brittany, the mall opens this year on Thanksgiving at 7 p.m., wow. which means that the workers have to cut their Thanksgiving dinner short to be with their family so that they can go to the mall and help these people who want to shop. Who wants to shop on Thanksgiving? Yeah, who I, wants to I do don't that? understand that. That should be a time reserved for family and, you know, fun time with your family and friends. And just time to relax. You're always doing something every, well, most of us are doing something every other day of the week anyway. Exactly. You know, so that should be a time just geared towards relaxing with your family. And you not know Not to shop. It's not even that bad for the mall workers. I was driving past Kmart, I think it was, and they said that they opened at 5 a.m. on Thanksgiving Day. Wow. Can you believe so that? So let me ask you this, because I worked in retail too, also before, and I don't really remember the Black Fridays. I, I don't know why. I just it's it comes and goes it's like cr after christmas to me it's all the same really however when they open at seven on thanksgiving, thanksgiving night how long do they stay open oh until 10 the following day really so people are shopping all, all day long. all day and all night and i don't understand how you don't remember wow. it's a reoccurring nightmare in my head like last year i literally remember yeah last year working at michael kors for black friday and when they opened the door to the mall, it was like a movie. I yeah, saw people yeah. <laughs> flying in with sharpened hearts, screaming, <laughs> yelling, like, yeah. And I was just like, <laughs> what is going on? I thought I was in the apocalypse or like there was some type of zombie that is apocalypse hilarious. going on. It was crazy. Yeah, so me personally, crazy. I don't indulge in the Black Friday shopping just because when I shop, I don't really like to be cramped like that and have hundreds of people around me thousands of people in the mall that is just, dangerous it's just too much it's so it, like it, it gets to be too much but people don't even think about how much like how dangerous it is what about all these stories that we hear about these people who actually die from being yeah trapped the lady who was trampled yeah, over like, because of trampled. black friday shopping like come on people. at walmart like, how, how serious is that you know someone died lost their lives because of black friday shopping that's ridiculous it is ridiculous but people don't important. care they are out there to get their things they want to get that 70 inch TV for $499 that pretty much is going to be horrible in TV resolution and probably only last you three months. So it's not even <laughs> worth you leaving your house to go get. But whatever. People want to feel but like they, they got a deal. feel like they're getting the best deal. Exactly. So, hey. No, but in all honesty, guys, like if you are going to like try to get good deals, I would say just stay home and wait for a Cyber Monday. You don't have to get out of your bed. You can keep your pajamas on and no long lines. But you just be breaking the internet, you know? <laughs> Cyber money. Speaking of breaking the internet, you guys, oh, so yeah. celebrity gossip. I know you all heard about the Kim Kardashian on the cover of Paper Magazine in the nude. And I, <laughs> I wasn't totally outdone because, I mean, come on, it's not new for her to be nude once again in the public eye. However, she is over 30 and she said that once she gets 30, she wouldn't pose nude anymore. And right now she's a mom. Like she's she wasn't a mom before when she did all of those nude photo shoots. So back then it probably wasn't or shouldn't have wouldn't have been as important to her. But now I feel like I don't know. I feel like whether I'm a mom or not, like my body is so sacred that that's something that I only want to share with like my husband. It's really mm -hmm. intimate, you know. So taking any type of nude picture, whether you're a mom, a wife in general is just not acceptable to me and it's even more not acceptable because kim kardashian she always wants like she always says like oh i don't want to be known as a porn star even though like she was famous off of a sex tape right but when you are posing nude like that and you are on a cover of a magazine with your butt crack hanging out we we think of you as like a porn absolutely star. like and not yeah. only that i mean from an unbiased opinion i know that she's a celebrity and this is how she makes her money uh, however oh sorry yeah no. she didn't get paid for that though that shoot she really? did absolutely free yes i read this especially according according to tmz um <laughs> she did not get paid for paper magazine she did it because she wanted to work with the photographer whose name is john van clay or something like that yeah. but again i just want us to get away from that sexist image putting women in this light that we are always sexual beings or we have to portray ourselves as sexual beings i just i'm for getting away from that and i feel like this brings us right back to it but that's all we have for today guys 
If you would like to hear us talk about a specific topic on the show or you have questions or comments for Leanne and myself, you can email us at talkjuicy at gmail.com and make sure you follow our Instagram page at talkjuicy. Until next week, we will see you again and thank you guys for watching.